Hello friends of the Dolly Cam, it is Rachel and I am here at the Simpich Museum in Old Colorado City, Colorado. I am here with Tony Simpich, who is a grandchild of the Simpich people. Tony, you have been here for nine and a half years mm -hmm. working at this museum. Can you yeah. tell our viewers, a lot of them are very familiar with Simpich dolls, mm -hmm. but for who is not, could you tell our viewers the lineage and, and the history behind the dolls in your family. Yeah, for sure. So the Simpich doll business was started actually out of their home. Um, they actually started it in Manitou and for the first like 20 years they just made them out of their home outsourcing to different people. You know, somebody would paint the heads and then they'd ship them around. And then in the 1970s they opened up in the building we're in right now and they had the upstairs and the downstairs and they made all the dolls in here for about 35 to 40 years-ish with over a hundred employees, every piece is hand painted and all the clothing is handmade. And then the uh, primary designers were Bob and Jan Simpich, a husband and wife team that, uh, that you know, really kind of made quite a unique business model happen over, over that span of time, yeah. Right, so this is so cool everybody because we are here and it is now a museum and it is a theater and you guys mm -hmm. have, uh, during November and December, you do wonderful um, puppet shows. Yeah, we also, uh, so we are Simpit Showcase, which is a different business. We have the museum and the consignment service where you can buy the dolls, but we also do our marionette shows. Um, and that's actually the doll maker's son David Simpich, who uh, grew up around the whole thing and it kind of inspired him to become a puppeteer. Extremely unique form of artwork as well for him, you know, as the dolls are really unique and he kind of found his own niche as well with the, uh, with the puppetry. It is so cool and the dolls, some, you guys are going to recognize them, but your family really likes holidays. Um, mm -hmm. it, was it, what do they love about the holidays that a lot of the dolls are centered around? Mm -hmm. Well, actually, the original idea, the original Simpich dolls that they made, we actually have some of the first ones inside the museum here. Um, they were made as Christmas gifts um, for, the, uh, uh, for their grandparents and parents back home because they just moved out here and left everybody behind, so they were trying to make something special. And that was kind of how it got started was linked to Christmas and then kind of over the years we're trying to think of ways to make more ideas and I think that's where the Thanksgiving came from and the nativity set that they also make. They do also have some pieces that aren't necessarily tied to the holidays but like you said almost uh, all of them all are tied. Holidays. So. So Tony just gave us the background on where we're standing and the museum and we have been given access to take you guys through the museum and see a couple of the exhibits that are happening right now. So it is so awesome. Tony Simpich, thank you so much for letting us be Thanks here. For coming he, you're in. live in the dolly cam. So you have a lot of doll people that are really excited to be here with us. So right. it's great. So I'm gonna get behind the camera and we are gonna go right in. So thank you so right. much, Tony. If you guys are tuning in, we are here live at the Simpich Character Doll Museum in Colorado, and we are gonna go right in. So Simpich Character Dolls are so cool. A lot of them are have been listed on Ruby Lane. There are some on Ruby Lane right now. Now the lighting is, it's really interesting when you're in here, but it might show up a little, uh, a little strange on the cameras. They have different lighting to actually make these vignettes really neat. But here's some of the 1950s, really early development of the dolls. This caroler face is one that you guys will recognize a lot. The carolers were, uh, and the peasants were some of the first dolls created by Simpich. And um, they were very creative and technologically advanced. And um, the orders for the dolls just kind of flew in like crazy once they started making the first dolls out here in Colorado. They made elves and the Dickens characters and Thanksgiving pilgrims, and they even made Robin Hood. If you guys are just tuning in, we're here live at the Simpich Doll Museum out here in Colorado. Please share the video so more people can hop on the feed. 
So by the early 1960s, space for an in-house doll business could no longer be managed by Bob and Jan in Bomba Jan's Manitou home. And a residential property near the Garden of the Gods was soon purchased. And in 1963, the Simpiches uh, and the addition of a toddler son, David, and two grandparents moved to a new house. And they made their, their basement entirely for creating the Simpich character dolls. So if you are seeing this right now, these are some of the early development of the Simpich character dolls. Now we're moving into the 1970s. And this was sort of the heyday for the Simpich characters. They really took off. They were making tons of characters at the time. And they are all original handmade dolls, hand painted. Each one is an original. So they're all gonna have their own little unique elements to them and they are all hand painted and they're just all really fantastic. This is cottage doll making, I guess you could call it. This biblical portrait was one of the later character doll designs created by Bob Simpich in 2003. After the head, hands, feet, and tablet had been sculpted, it was decided that each piece would be cast in a porcelain resin and then carefully painted with a translucent approach, allowing the white of the cast pieces to appear through the paint. This technique was used on only a few Simpich dolls. That's, that's a really cool vignette right there. Oh, so here we're gonna start at the beginning. I actually started on the wrong side. These are the very first Simpich dolls. The first set of peasants was crafted in the fall of 1952. Bob remembers that a large woodsman with the ax, he was the, one of the very first ones right there, the large wood, woodsman with the ax. And he is recognized right there as the very first Simpich doll, very first ever. The peasants were represented to, um, presented to Jan's parents. So Jan and Bob right there, these are the people that first started the Simpich character dolls. They are the founders. And this case right here is all of the very first Simpich characters. So they were actually really cool for the first ones. They've definitely come a long way. Here's some of the early artwork. So displayed in this case is a small sampling of original artwork produced by Bob and Jan during their courtship. At the time, they were completely absorbed and highly skilled in their chosen mediums. Bob really liked landscapes and texture, and Jan really liked people's faces and fabric and costumes. And there they are getting married. That's Bob and Jan Simpich. So here's the first Simpich dolls from 1952. The very first set of carolers were carefully made from scraps of wood. Unlike later Simpich dolls, where the heads were reproduced in molds, Bob and Jan actually sculpted all of these heads individually and used them on finished pieces. So these are all one of a kind sculpted dolls. At the time they were made, the plastic modeling clay was tinted with a light skin tone, which dramatically yellowed through the years. So you can kind of tell the yellowing right there. Later, the heads were always, always base coated with paint. But these are some very, very, very early Simpich dolls. So take a good look at them if you ever find any like this. They were the very first ones that were made, 1952. Here's an Abraham Lincoln retrospective, which is kind of interesting. I just, who doesn't love Abraham Lincoln? Over many years, the Simpiches were fascinated by the person Abraham Lincoln was and how he might be interpreted as a character doll and as a sculpture. So displayed here is an assortment of different versions that were produced beginning with a one of a kind in the middle.
This was a widely produced Simpich Lincoln doll. Several busts of Lincolns were also produced over the years, as well as a limited edition Abraham Lincoln doll reading The Pilgrim's Progress. History in the making. We are here live at the Simpich Doll Museum in Colorado. So here's some fairy tales of the 1950s. Displayed here is a collection of storybook characters from the mid-1950s that Bob and Jan were commissioned to create to tour the Denver Public Libraries. Another set was produced shortly after the tour of Colorado Springs District 11 schools. These 3D illustrations were produced in extremely small numbers and only a handful or less was ever created. So starting over here is Alice in Wonderland. Pinocchio, Hansel and Gretel in The Witch, Winnie the Pooh, and Christopher Robin, and Heidi. Don't you guys just love the cases that these are displayed in as well? So beautifully done. Here is Mary Poppins. Look at this case. It's just marvelous. The practically perfect English nanny was all the rage in the mid-1960s, due in great part to the popular movie Bob and Jan created, but uh, uh, their own character, Doll of Mary, not for sale, but for their son, David, on his sixth birthday, as the story and her character were their very favorite. I just love this. Look at this case. It's just so beautifully displayed. Mary, Hop Mary Poppins. That is a Julie Andrews look-alike Simpich doll right there. Just wonderful. Less than a handful of these were ever created, so if you guys ever find any of the Mary Poppins dolls, they are very rare. Here is the marionette. Bob and Jan's son David produced a marionette play of Hansel and Gretel in 1993, which featured a heroic gingerbread boy named, oh, I'm going to pronounce this wrong, Pfeffer Kuchichin? Oh, I, I just, I did not pronounce that right. But that is really cute. Look at that. Here is some of the sculpting and casting and original sculpts of the Simpich dolls. And the painting. Mel Odom is a doll maker himself. Mel, thank you for tuning in. Mel has done a lot of creative things in his life and the Simpich people were so creative with everything that they made and they are Colorado artists. Right here, we're seeing some of the sewing, behind the scenes sewing of the Simpich dolls. And of course, finishing. Finishing is very important. It's all the little details that make things just so wonderful. Adding the bread to the little bread lady and just all of the wonderful little touches. All of the little finishing touches. And then of course they were all shipped out. So I'm gonna turn around here because we're gonna look at some more of these characters. So these are some of the Old West characters. Jan and Bob's oldest son was fascinated by the Old West. He is currently serving as a pastor of a church in Hanover, Colorado. So these are some great Old West characters. Here 
Here's The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. In Mark Twain's novels, Tom Sawyer's hometown was called St. Petersburg. But for millions of fans of his literature, Tom, Huck Finn, and Becky Thatcher will always belong to Hannibal, Missouri, Twain's boyhood home. And these are some scenes and characters from Mark Twain's novels. Again, the displays are just remarkable here, the vignettes. They're just really fantastic. This is perfect for Thanksgiving. In 1958, the earliest set of Thanksgiving pilgrims called Puritans at the time was painstakingly fashioned by Bob and Jan and presented to Jan's parents for Christmas. Because of the cast feet and legs, numerous accessories and detailed painting and sewing, Bob and Jan assumed that not many sets could be produced, but as word spread of the inter intricate holiday characters, uh, they, they had to produce more. So orders were backed up like crazy, and for many years, their popularity required customers to wait up to six years to have their set delivered. Six years. Isn't that amazing? Could you guys imagine waiting six years for a doll? I guess I could if I was one you really wanted. Of course, Simpich... Simpich characters are famous for being Christmas scenes. Here's some wonderful Christmas scenes. We see the newsboy and the carolers and the skaters. I really love this Santa tableau. All these wonderful Santas, look how happy they are. And this is wonderful. This is the nativity. After years of customer requests, Bob and Jen reluctantly set to create a Christmas manger scene in 1981. They had always been hesitant about the casting prospects, sandaled feet, a fully sculpted donkey, so many things that go into this, but they took it on. And their uh, prayerful efforts are one of the, still one of the most celebrated Simpich displays. This is just a marvelous nativity display right here. Really rare, just beautiful. Here's a Dickens Christmas Carol. In 1954, a very special and endearing tradition of Dickens Christmas characters was, st was started by the Simpages. Displayed in the center is an original set of Cratchits presented to Jan's parents. And through the years, all of the characters were redesigned many times. But these character dolls hold a special place and honor for the Simpiches as they gently and whimsically and with a measure of honest age and homespun earnestness personify the humble family whose Christmas could not be spoiled by Ebenezer Scrooge. Isn't that just lovely? Here's a Christmas pageant nativity. The idea for this tiny set of dolls was conceived shortly before Jan and Bob decided to close their business. And the characters had been in production, had the characters been in production longer, elementary age 
kings and shepherds, and perhaps children dressed as donkey, cow, and sheep would have surrounded Mary and Joseph. But that's one of the last sets right there. Look at this wonderful display. Christmas morning. This tree is just magnificent, covered in all of the wonderful Simpich characters. This is a glimpse of Christmas past for the Simpiches. Jan's mother's tea cart, Bob's mother's chair, stockings knitted by Aunt Jan's Aunt Marcia. Such a fun little Christmas scene in there and wonderful dolls. And as you guys can see, this museum is just really decorated in a super fun way. If you guys are just tuning in, we're here live at the Simpich Museum in Colorado, um, in old Colorado City, Colorado. It's a little dark in here. It's such a cool museum. We're going to get off of the live feed so then you can actually go back and rewatch the video. We had an introduction to the video by uh, Toby Simpich, the, one of the great, uh, one of the grandchildren of the Simpich creators. And it's just a, um, a really wonderful place to see these dolls and sit, see these um, fantastic creations. So uh, over the next few days, we will be tuning in a lot live for the Doll Artisan Guild convention. Ruby Lane is a proud sponsor of the convention and it's very exciting that we are here. So we hope you guys enjoyed this peek at the Simpich Museum and please share the video. And we hope you guys can come visit the Simpich Museum next time you are in Colorado. Bye-bye, everybody.